After all the video series that I've started, <laughs> and believe me, if there's a, a topic or a thought that I had, or that God inspired me with, then sure enough, I'd go, video it! <laughs> and I'd start a video grace, video something, video whatever. This one is interesting, is that this was one of the few times that God actually woke me up and said, Video Grace, you know, or Video Gospel, and told me to do one. And it was like, oh wow, I guess God wants the Gospel. <laughs> oh sure, there's lots of people out there, you know, preaching the Gospel and talking about this religious thing or that religious thing, but you see, when God woke me up, He wasn't really kind of looking for another, you know, Billy Graham or a, a Greg Glory or, you know, some great preacher or teacher. He kind of wanted somebody that was going to get, you know, just bluntly brass tacks, you know, where the rubber meets the road to get real, you know, to tell you just bluntly, you know, where it's at. I mean, I'm sure you don't want to waste your time, and frankly, I don't want to waste my time, and I don't want either one of us to waste either one of our time. So... Really, if you're not interested in the gospel, go away. Bluntly. Because, you see, when I'm hungry, I eat. That may sound a little obvious to you, but I could be dieting and choose not to eat. So I pass up on the food. If I was starving, then I would jump on that food and scarf it, down it, you know, because I wanted it, and I was hungry, and it was to the point of dying, so to speak, so if I was that hungry, of course I'd want it, matter of fact, good as this pizza tastes, if I was starving, man, this would be right up my alley, same is true about when you're thirsty, I don't know about you, but when I'm thirsty, I drink. You know, you get something to drink because you you have that kind of thirst. You know, you feel like you're dry inside or you've got cotton mouth. So you, if you're like me, you grab a Pepsi first and drink water later. <laughs> if you're not like me, well, then you probably drink healthy and, you know, do all the right things, you know. And cool. That's good for you. I'm happy for you. But you see, each one of us have learned or adapted our own body types and body styles, you know, to a style of living that we're comfortable with. Me personally, I kind of like pizza and Pepsi in the morning, especially from yesterday, because put a bunch of salt on it and mmm. I love it. The salt makes me thirsty and it enhances the flavor of the pizza. And Pepsi, man, it just takes out all the hot air or gas that I get from the pizza, obviously. And helps chew it up. You know, and now I'm just like in seventh heaven. But you know, when it comes to the gospel, if you're really not interested, you shouldn't bother. You shouldn't waste anybody's time and you shouldn't pretend. If you were not interested in God, then why bother? Go somewhere else. Go do something else. Go be what you want to be, you know. There's enough motivational speakers out there and there's enough wide variety of things to get involved in that you don't even need to bother with the gospel. I mean, come on, you know. After all, if you're not interested, no matter what I say, it's going to change your mind, so go away. Go do something else. But if you get hungry, you know, come back and check it out. And that's kind of what the bottom line is when it comes to the gospel. If a person doesn't want to be saved, you can't save them. You know, I mean, people try to whack, to me, wackily, you know, and I'll say wackily because I know it's a made-up word, but they wackily try to 
you know, crack over people's heads the Bible and make them feel guilty and guilt them into the kingdom of God. They try to make them feel like they're heading for hell, so they scare them into the kingdom of God. You know, they they do every other trick in the book except for just tell them, look, take it or leave it. Who cares? <laughs> you want to go to hell? Great, go there. You know, you don't? Great, figure it out. Otherwise, put up or shut up. I mean, that's what boils down to when it comes to the gospel. Put up or shut up. And for me, I had to come to that conclusion. You see, I had to tell God to put up or shut up because there were lots of people around me that, you know, quite frankly, you know, they had all these wonderful experiences and I had nothing. They were glowing and happy and joyful and I was like kind of lonely and miserable and kind of like looking for love in all the wrong places, you know. So I went to one of those Jesus concerts, you know, and everybody, everybody there had something I wanted. Now, if they had been religious, you know, like sitting in a pew, because they were in chairs, they were kind of in pews in some places, but they were chairs, you know, because it was like packed out. But this was Calvary Riverside at the time. But anyways, if they had been like religious, you know, I would have been out of there because I wasn't raised in a you know church. I would not have been religious, you know, wouldn't have been interested because, quite frankly, religion sucks <laughs> in a lot of ways. It's boring. I mean, if it wasn't for God in it, I wouldn't have anything to do with religion. But since God is in it, I kind of enjoy it, you know, from my own personal point of view. But when I was discovering what this gospel quote unquote is, you know, I really didn't have much background material to go by. I just had to go where people were dragging me off to in concerts, you know. And the concert was pretty good, you know, I mean, it was, uh, I remember I Sweet Comfort Band. And uh, it was great, you know, I mean, Greg was up there and, you know, still had some hair. <laughs> he gave a message, you know, and it was kind of cool, you know, I kind of enjoyed it. And it was kind of like, you know, we were doing a lot of fun things that, you know, I guess nowadays they call it Sunday school, but, you know, we'd stand up and sit down, you know, we'd clap, you know, and we'd sing, and, you know, it's kind of fun, you know, those things. And had I not gone forward, and then they dragged me off into a prayer room and prayed for me, but, you know, figures something a little different. But had I not experienced God in a personal, intimate way, I wouldn't be a Christian, because, quite frankly, that would have been kind of like a fun thing to do, but it would have been an amusement park for me. I would have gone and got my church fix, so to speak, regularly, just based upon the fun I had before I got saved. You know, it was kind of neat to see all the people kind of like, you know, doing their thing, you know, and goofing off. Well, the fact that I got saved didn't stop me from having even more questions than <laughs> I had before I got saved. Because, you see, after God whew, decided, hey, he's going to do something in my life, he kind of like made me feel something that I had no explanation for. I had no comprehension of, and I had no way of adapting to that sudden realization of the knowledge that he'd given me, and I had to kind of like get real with God and say, look, buddy, I don't know what just happened, but we got to have some kind of meeting of the minds here. I need to understand what this is because I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. But I know it's real, but I don't know why it's real, I don't know how it's real, I don't know how to explain it. Now it's true, I did run out and share what little bit I knew, John 3.16, you know, and I told people about being born again, you know, and things like that, that, you know, just popped out of my mouth, you know, whatever happened to pop out of my mouth at the time, that's what I shared. But in our days today, you know, you see these huge revivals and lots of people doing all these wonderful things they say about millions of people, you know, coming to Jesus and, you know, asking him into their life and you kind of go, what's up with that? You know, really, let's get real, between you and I, come on, you know, I'm leveling with you and you can level with me. You sat back and you looked at one of those, like, TV things, you know, and you said, what's up with that? I mean, come on, get real. Those people look wacko. I mean, they're doing all this weird stuff. You know, they, they go forward and they say some prayer and then suddenly they're changed. I don't think so. Well, let me be honest with you. You're right. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> you 
nine times out of ten, most people are just kind of going along with the good feeling of a big crowd. I mean, that's the truth. Don't you want to know the truth? Well, that's kind of why I'm sharing this, you know. It's talking about what's real and what's not real, you know. A lot of times people get caught up in emotional responses, you know, like in a rock concert. I mean, come on now. You've been to a rock concert or maybe you've been to a country western concert. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you went to a football game, you know, cheerleaders. But the point is, when you were in a crowd of people, didn't you get the feeling from the crowd, you know, the excitement, you know, the, the like worked up routine, you know, that whatever was going on, you were a part of, you know, and you kind of got involved in it? That's kind of what happens with these big, giant things they call revivals and, you know, salvation messages and all this kind of, you know, religious stuff that you see. It's kind of nice, you know, because it, it feels good, you know, it looks good. Sometimes if you're in the crowd, you know, it's kind of like pretty cool to be there. But then after the feelings are gone, you kind of left a little empty, aren't you? Well, that's kind of where, you know, maybe something didn't get explained here you know it's kind of like do you really know what the gospel is you know because it sounds like you know people talk this thing and you know make everybody promises that you know you see either happen or don't happen and people go off on these weird ideas about getting lots of money or getting instantly healed you know and all these other things and maybe some of them do you know hey I know the placebo effect for some it's a placebo effect for some Yes, I'll be truthful. God does do those things. I know. I've been there. But, quite frankly, on the majority level, let's be real. When you start seeing 10,000 people, you know, in a stadium, you know, and like you get all these 7,000 people come running forward, they don't look so sick when they come running forward, do they? <laughs> no. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're excited. You know, they're doing their thing, you know, and that's good for them. And, I'm happy, but you and I, come on, let's let's talk. And since this is about gospel, let's let's get down to the brass tacks. You know, if you really don't want to know, you're never going to understand it. But if you wanted to know, then yeah, it's kind of like about figuring out whether this this God thing that people talk about is real or not. You know, after all, there's lots of religions that talk God. You know, and I'm sure you've heard everybody you know argue about. Well, I'm sure there's a God somewhere, you know, he's a higher power, or, yeah, you know, a God of this, or a God of that, you know. Kind of like they've always done throughout history. So what was the big difference about this Christian thing, you know? And you already know the answer to that, because I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's like, Jesus, of course, you know. Jesus dying on a cross and all that stuff. You've heard that part. You know, and that's the cool part, you know, in a way. You know, because you already know it. But the part that's kind of scary is... What if God's real? I mean, what if it's not a story and, you know, you you yourself can prove it by yourself without anybody else involved? What if you are the one who gets to find out factually without anybody being there whether or not God is real? And then what if you do? That's kind of where you're at, you know, because if you really picked up this video grace or video gospel it's kind of like hey I'm just telling you look you know <laughs> you already know the story you know you've heard it at Christmas or you've heard it at Easter and you've been to some church somewhere you know where you've heard something about the gospel but the bottom line is y you just don't get it yet so that's what we're talking about is God real and can you prove it and the bottom line is yes and that's the scary part. You see, it's easy for me to sit back and say, ah, you know, just go to a church, you know, and go to an altar call, you know. Or go to a congregation, you know, or go to a revival meeting, you know. Go get the good feelings and go run it forward and, you know, give your life to God, you know. And everything will be hunky-dory, you know, and you'll be wonderful for the rest of your life. And maybe that worked for you. <laughs> You know, I mean, I was a Jesus freak, so, you know, hey, <laughs> so a lot of us just came running forward because it felt good, you know. <laughs> and a lot of people kind of operated like that for 20 or 30 years. <laughs> well, it feels good, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> but the bottom line, according to what I've experienced, you know, in life and with God and with Jesus in a personal, intimate relationship with Him, 
is that not only is he real, but he can talk to you. And that's the kind of scary part, because you see, everyone will say, no, you, you know, you, you, you can't tell people that. You, know, you can't tell people they can hear God, because you know, then they're going to hear voices, and they're going to be like wackos and locked up in mental institutes, you know, and all that other thing. So I go, okay, so you want me to tear out the Old Testament? <laughs> and most of the New Testament? Matter of fact, you want me to throw away the Bible? I mean, after all, isn't that what the Bible says all the way through it, that God was, like, you know, talking to people? Oh, I know, you're, you're going to stop me now and say, well, wait a minute now, I've challenged God lots of times and said, God, if you're real, show me, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you remember this part, you know, this little pizza here? Did you really want to know? Because between you and I, I know better. I've said lots of times when I was reading sci-fi, when I was a kid growing up, you know, there'd be something in it about some deity or something. I'd say, oh, well, if that deity's real, then you make this candle blow out. <laughs> yeah, right, like it happened? Not. Or I'd say something like, you know, well, you know, if you're if you're real and you do this, you know. I was always dictating the terms, you know. That was kind of fun when I was reading sci-fi. Then kind of a weird thing happened. When I started reading the Bible, I started seeing things that were happening in my life exactly the way it was written. And I went, ooh, that's weird. But I kind of wrote that off as being like, you know, hey, that could be some like, you know, kismet kind of nirvana, you know, kind of like, whoa thing, you know. You know, like, whoa, that's awesome, dude. But when I finally started arguing, getting real down to the, you know, nitty gritty and saying, okay, God, now I want to know, what's the bottom line here? And quite frankly, he started telling me, bottom line is you're going to hell. And I went, oh, and it was kind of like a silence. And then God spoke to me and said, but you don't have to. And I went, oh. And then he said, there is a place for you in my kingdom. And I went, cool. Because at the time, I was all into kingdoms, you know. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of neat, you know. And I was kind of like, wow, there is really cool. I, I like that. You know, I was kind of like, cool. I'm going to be in the kingdom. What am I going to be, a knight? <laughs> Obviously, no. But, you know, at the time, it was kind of a neat idea. But you were probably like me. You know, you wanted to put God in the test, you know, and figure out your own way of proving it. Well, you were almost right, because you can do that. But you still got to do it his way, because he wants to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And you and I know that if we make up our own little set of rules of how he demonstrates or proves something... You and I will lie about it later, and you know we'll kind of like say, ha, it didn't happen, uh, no, 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 no. We'll just kind of like shuffle it off, you know, so, yeah, right, sure happened. But you see, you're the one who's going to deal with God face to face. You're the one who's going to have to prove to yourself reality or not. You're the one who decides if God is real, and then if the gospel is. And that's where you have to go and get alone with God. Now, I'll be straight with you how I used to tell people, and you can do this if you want to. Take a Bible with you, you know. I don't care what Bible you got. Don't care what it is. Don't care even if it's a magazine. <laughs> Although that would be a little weird, but, you know, you won't believe it if you used it, so I wouldn't use the magazine. Try a Bible. Usually it works a little better. But try sitting down sometime, you know, and just say, Hickey, you know, God... This this character on the internet, you know, this wacko, you know, that claims to hear your voice, you know, he, he says that he can, you know, talk to you and you talk to him. Well, I don't buy it, but but God, why won't you talk to me? What about me? You know, I'm not interested in that guy on the internet because, first of all, he's free, so you know, who cares? But what about me, God? Why won't you talk to me? What's the problem here? Am I? Am I like chopped liver or, you know, something wrong with me that I can't hear you? I mean, if there's something wrong that I can't hear you, then let me know, 
you know, because I'll I'll listen for a while, but you know, then I'll decide whether you know you're real or not. And you see, that's part of the problem of why you can't hear God. You're really not listening because you don't want to. And that's where Jesus said bluntly, if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. Jesus said, you bluntly could hear God speak if you want to. Because he said, he would be found by you if you searched for him with all your heart. And a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, that sounds good. That's kind of one of those, like, yeah, right. You just want my money, you know, and you want to give me this and get me into church and, you know, all that. Let me be perfectly clear. You don't have to go to church. It helps, but, you know, it's kind of like those big revival meetings, you know. You don't have to go to one of those giant things to, you know, go get saved, you know. You can do it at home, I mean, quite frankly. You can talk to God and God will talk to you and then you can ask him, hey, am I saved? And God will say, no, but here's what you can do about it and he'll tell you, you know. Do it, you know. If he don't do it, then don't get saved. I don't really care. It's up to you. You see, my part is only to let you know that you can and there are ways that you can do it that maybe you hadn't thought of, you know, just like talking straight to God, you know, without really getting all too religious about it. I mean, there are other ways. Yeah, you could say, oh, God, you know, forgive me of my sins, you know, cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, you know, pardon all my iniquities, you know, cause me to come to you and I confess that I'm a sinner and I do this and I do that and I'm in this and I am that and I just want you to save me, you know. You can do that, you know. If it works for you, hey, I'm the first one to say, whatever works, do do it. You know, I mean, go for it. How's that working out for you? You know, that's kind of what I ask people. You know, there's the scripture literally says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the bottom line is you just cry out to Jesus or cry out to God. I mean, I don't care if you call him Jesus or not. Might help, but you know, try it. See which one works. <laughs> but you cry out to God. Don't cry out thinking you're just like, you know, not going to get an answer. You know, you kind of need to cry out thinking you're going to get an answer. And then don't be so, pardon the expression, but I'll say it bluntly so you know that we're on the same page. Don't be so damn surprised when he answers. I mean, after all, we are talking about God. You know, the definition that almost every Christian has of God is that he's bigger than you are, smarter than you are, and he can do more than you can. That's the big definition. <laughs> Hello? So, if I were you, you know, and if I was on the outside looking in, I'd say, well then, if you're big enough, and you're smart enough, and you can, then I want you to do something about it and show me. Prove to me that you're real. And then go for it. Lay out your little conditions, play your little game, you know, and talk to God about it, you know. I got news for you. You're probably going to get an answer. And then you're in trouble, because once you have an answer, you're either going to, like, accept the fact that Jesus is his son, or you're going to reject it. And quite frankly, once you have an answer, according to the Book of Romans, you might change that answer to something really weird because you don't want to do what God tells you to do next. Because you see, the interesting thing is that when I came to Jesus, I didn't just come to him because, oh, I was going to get a wonderful life. I came to Jesus because I wanted to give up my life. I came to Jesus because my life sucked. I came to Jesus because I wanted something that he had that I didn't. And I wanted to know more about what it was and what it would cost. And that's kind of where sometimes these big crowds don't always tell you, you know, the whole story. You know, the whole story of this good news or gospel or, you know, salvation message that people talk about. They say things like, you know, well, you know, come unto me all your labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You know, and they say all these nice things, you know. It's nice, you know, it happens, you know, it's good, you know, it's calm, you know, you're going to be peaceful, you know, you're going to be able to handle it. It's going to be like a wave on the ocean, you're just going to catch a wave, you know, and you'll be fine. Till the tide comes in. <laughs> and quite frankly, there are some things you got to do. You know, like deny yourself. Ooh. 
that's a biggie. Yeah, that's what I was told. And it's a huge biggie. And you'll find that most people really don't deal with it as much as they really should. And quite frankly, when the tide comes in, they may be pulling, you know, like a surfboard out from their nose. Because quite frankly, they may nosedive with it, you know, and have it flip over and kind of hit them in the head, trying to get their attention. Because it's not all about cruising and snoozing through this life, you know, as though this were the full sum of your existence. But once you start talking to God, and you actually get a response, suddenly you realize, wait a minute, I just got a hold of God. God just spoke to me. That must mean there's more to this life than what I think I know. And there must be more to existence than what I've been told. And there must be more to living this existence than what I really thought I had all down pat. You know, like learn it on your own and do your own thing, you know, and get a job and get this and go there and go do this and enjoy this and enjoy that. That's the difference. You see, when you finally decide that you want to know, God will speak to you. But until you finally really care to know, you're not going to hear a damn thing he has to say. You know why? Because bluntly, you don't want to. You've had it your way. You've been doing your own thing, been enjoying it, you know, you've been partying, you've been in getting away with it and you kind of like it and if you do go for it dude you know it's gonna put you in hell but hey if that's what you want go there I mean since you don't know and you don't want to know that's what you're gonna go that's the way it works but I wasn't real happy with that idea because I didn't like somebody being in charge of me even though I kind of figured out that, well, if he made me, then I guess he could wipe me out if he wanted to. <laughs> huh. I didn't like that idea. So I kind of figured out what the boundaries were, you know, like how far could I go down this road, you know, grace? How how much uh, selfishness can I get away with? You know, how much uh, sin can I do? You know, you know, where are the boundaries at? You know, what, what, what really is the benefit and what really is the cost? You know, and what can I kind of negotiate here? Of course, that meant that I had to have a relationship with God. That meant that I had to start negotiating with, <laughs> quite frankly, God. And the only way I could was when I started, really, start talking to him and he started talking to me. And I began to realize, man, he knows me. <laughs> He's got me cold. I mean, God bluntly told me everything I ever needed to know about myself very quickly in very short term words and very didn't take much time at all to figure that one out you know that he knew me better than I knew me and the weird thing was was that he kind of once I started this kind of investigative you know challenge to find out is God real he introduced me to his son, you know, and you know, I kind of never really got that Jesus thing down completely. I'd watch the movies, you know, and I'd always talk about it, you know, but I always felt like I was closer to the Father than Jesus, but gradually I got to know Jesus, you know, and as I did, you know, it seemed different, but the same, you know, and it's kind of like when those Christians talk about, you know, three and one and all that stuff, you know, Trinity, well, you know, there's Father, Son, and Spirit, and it's, you know, a little confusing, I'm sure, but guess what? You don't know everything when you start a job, so guess what? You don't know everything when you start a new life. And that's kind of what you're doing if you really want to know what the gospel's about. You know, it's kind of like figuring out that this this whole thing that they were talking about spiritual, you know, and spirituality, it's true. You really are dead spiritually. You don't really have much of a life because you're just living carnally. You know, you're living in your flesh. And if that's all you want, you know, dude, if you just want to kind of like kick it, you know, and just kind of cruise along thinking that you're, you know, hotty toddy until one day you get old and you go, you know, I've been looking around in my life, you know, and man, this ain't all it's cracked up to be. I think about that time, you're going to figure out 
kind of like I am. That peach is good. I'm getting hungry for something more. I'm about ready to eat some steak. You know, prime rib, baby t ball. Kind of like porterhouse. But if you offered me a glass of milk, I'd probably throw it at you. And that's kind of like the way life is, you know? You start off, you get like all this milk toast stuff, you know? Kind of soppy. Everything's going to be hunky dory for you. Wonderful life, you know? It's going to go on smooth sailing, you know? No matter what, you know, you, you hear that from the world, you know? Well, motivational speakers, well, you just got to be happy. You just got to be positive thinking. You just got to do this and that. And give me your 10 bucks 20, 30, 50, 60, hundreds. Buy my VD. I mean, my CD. And get VD. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, the whole success story thing, you know, you, you do it for a while, this milky, toasty thing, you know, and you kind of get all caught up in it, and it sounds good, but then one day you wake up and you go, I'm hungry, but I don't know what for. I'm thirsty, but I don't know what for. And by the way, I've never given up Pepsi. <laughs> there ain't nothing better than Pepsi, man. I started off with the best. No, <laughs> just kidding. But seriously, you know, if you're at your life and you're cruising it, you know, and you're you're content with where you're at, then ignore the gospel. Go on with your life. Go do your thing, you know. But if you get to a point where it's kind of like there's got to be something more, or you know deep down inside that something ain't right, not the time to have a long, hard talk. You know, conversation with God. Oh, sure, you can pray, you know, and get all holy about it, you know, and get on your knees and, you know, cry out to God or face or lift your hands or do whatever, you know, but quite frankly, God can talk to you wherever you're at, like right now, you know. If you're not content, if you want something more, when you're ready, you know, when you think you have the end of your rope, you know, some of you, you know, you might, be, might have been past ready, you know, it's kind of like suddenly... Like I said, that those waves you thought you were cruising on suddenly turned into, you know, like a 20 or 30 foot, you know, killer wave that just threw you for a loop, you know, and now you broke your back and you're not surfing anymore. Then it's kind of reality check. And that's kind of what death does. It kind of makes you think about it, you know, and pain really drives you to the knees of suffering and makes you kind of go, is there more? kind of what I call just simply, hey, you go live your life. Sooner or later, those things are going to happen to you. They will. I guarantee it. Life is going to change no matter how good you think you got it or how bad you think you got it. It's going to change one way or another. It's either going to get worse or better. Or something's going to change about it. But one way or another, it's going to change. If it works out for you, cool. If you think you got it together, great. If you think everything's hunky-dory, fine. Go for it. You know as well as I do that you know there's a hell and quite frankly you don't want to go there. And Sooner or later you wake up in the middle of the night some point in time and you say I need to do something. Because you're not stupid. You know that there's got to be more to it than this. You know that all the excuses and all the reasons were kind of not right. And you know if you've read it, you know, like parts of the Bible, you know, like where Jesus was talking, the Jesus part made sense. Now, maybe I'll, you know, I'll go with you for a minute. You know, maybe the church doesn't make sense to you. You know, and really, you don't have to go to church in order to find God or talk to him. You don't have to go to church to find Jesus, you know, to put it bluntly. But you kind of got to, sooner or later, deal with the subject of heaven and hell. And when you deal with that subject... I think you know as well as I do, it ain't working out for you. Matter of fact, the odds are stacked against you. Most people will admit, yeah, they may have a wrong idea about hell. You know, some of them thinking they're going to party down there, but they know that they deserve it. And that's kind of where you figure into your decision-making process. Do you really want to go for it, do your own thing? live your own life, 
have it your way? Or do you want to talk to God and find out there's something different? A better way? Is there something to this God thing? To life? Remember that scripture I said? They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say they have to be saved. It doesn't say they won't be saved. It says they shall be. But the crying out is kind of your part. You gotta, you gotta want it. You gotta be hungry for it. You gotta really kind of decide to treat it like it's a serious subject. Because I don't know about you, but when I started looking around and seeing what some of these Christians had, I said, you know what? I don't want, you know, like these prosperity Christians, but I want what those people that seem to not lose their cookies when the economy goes bad. I want some of what they got. I want some of that happiness that seems like most of those Christians have, even when they find out they got cancer, you know, and they're dying. I mean, they, they don't seem to have this problem with life. They seem to deal with it a different way. I want to be like them, you know? And, I don't know about you, but that's how I got saved. I looked at John Wayne's, some of the biggest heroes, you know, that were around in my day and my time, and I stacked them up their life and their style of living against what I saw these people. And I said, they got something I want. And as it turned out, they had Jesus. And I can be honest with you straight up now and can tell you, you know, <laughs> I got Jesus. I, I got Jesus. That's all I know. I got Jesus. He's got me. More than that, it's kind of like, well, <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> He's got me. I got him. We got to get out of here, you know, because quite frankly, the world's falling apart, you know, so we got to get out of this place, you know, and God's going to take me someplace else and ain't going to be here, thank God, because in case you hadn't noticed, things are really kind of messed up, and I just look around and say, you know, that's not the way I would do it, and God says, that's not the way I do it either, so he's going to do a makeover, you know, and it's going to kind of like destroy most of the world and kind of like wipe out what men and women and people have done to it. Kind of start over, you know, for about a thousand years to kind of like give you an idea of what it's supposed to look like, you know. And I'd love to tell you that you could wait to see it then, but it ain't going to happen. You see, right now you get to decide whether you get into that kingdom or you get to kind of kick it out here and die in your sin, die in your own foolishness, you know, die in your stupidity, you know, partying, you know, and doing your thing, but maybe, just maybe, if you're like me, once you've tasted Pepsi or the Lord, Once you've experienced how good God is, I mean really, once you know there is a God, man, I'm telling you, straight up, you'll never go back. You'll never go back. You may try it out and check it, you know, see if like the old style is still there. And you'll see it's still there. But you know, once you've crossed over once you know that God is real, once God has done things in your life and talked to you, worked in your life and walked with you, you know, adjusted your understanding and helped you to comprehend that He is love, man, I tell you, ain't nothing like it. You'll never be the same. And the truth is, you won't 